Hi, how are you? This is Aris Klasson and I am together with baby Luke here who's a little bit grumpy because he just woke up. He's eight weeks old now and he weighs five kilos so I'm getting a good workout holding him all the time. He likes to be close. So I'll hurry up with today's question and today's question is where does the maintainability index come from? So I don't know if you've noticed but in Visual Studio you can get the maintainability index for a project. Basically, maintainability index is sort of an indicator how difficult it's going to be to maintain uh, that, that part of the code. Um, it's heavily criticized though, and I'll get back to that soon. It's calculated by using psychomatic complexity, whole set volume, and lines of code. Uh, if you want to know more about psychomatic complexity, uh, I believe I had that as a stupid question of the day, and I'll add a link below so you can read more about it. So this, uh, this metric can be calculated in different ways. Uh, one popular formula is using psychomatic complexity, whole set volume and lines of code, as I mentioned. And another popular way is to also take into account comments, uh, amount of comments in code. And it comes from 1991, way back in the day. It makes me feel really old when I say 1991. And it was introduced by Oman and Hagemeister. Hope I don't, didn't butcher their name. They wrote about it in their paper and it immediately became quite popular. Because obviously, you know, companies are always looking for ways to try to estimate the cost of the software they're maintaining and developing. And we all know that technical debt is a problem. Now the problem with maintainability index, uh, which in Visual Studio it's a score between zero and hundred, is that there are a lot of things that we don't, uh, we haven't really thought about. Uh, for example, in naming conventions, it doesn't take that into account. If you have really horrible naming uh, in your project, everything from classes to method signatures, uh, signatures and so on, and the code is basically unreadable, that's going to add to the difficulty of maintaining that code and maybe even the complexity of the code because it's difficult to read. Also, comments can sometimes be, for example, XML documentation type of comments. Uh, they might actually make sense instead of being an indicator of sort of trying to explain what the code does instead of having good architecture. And also how are lambdas resolved and, and so on. So there are a lot of things that are not taking into, taken into account when calculating this metric and that's why it has been heavily criticized. However, it is available and it can be fun to use. Uh, for example, I use it before I refactor a large part of the code. It's just nice. <laughs> just for the, just the metric itself of the lines of code, it's nice to see because my aim when I refactor is always to have less code than when I started refactoring. So you can pull out the information before and after and do a comparison. So you can use it for that. I wouldn't use it as a deal breaker. Uh, it can be an indicator, but I'm not sure if I would consider it a strong indicator of uh, maintainability of your code. It is, however, available. So, yeah, that's today's question. And I think this, <laughs> this little nugget wants to eat, so I'm going to go ahead and feed him. I'll be back before you know it with another stupid question of the day, and he'll probably be there joining us. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.